Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at reduction and oxidation. Now reduction and oxidation is a process by which electrons are moved from uh, one chemical and received, to, uh, received by another one. So obviously this is a very important part of chemistry just by the nature of the process. Um, in this video we're going to look at the uh, process of oxidation and reduction uh, and we're going to look at the difference between that and oxidizing and reducing agents which are um, slightly different. Um, we're also going to look at redox reactions as well, what that means, um, and look at some of these spectator ions that are in our, are in our um, reaction. We're also going to look at half equations and ionic equations as well, and, and we're effectively going to construct them from a standard equation. So we're going to start with the acronym which you might have heard of before, which is oil rig. Now oil rig um, stands for, um, helps you to, well, helps you to remember um, what oxidation and reduction is. So oxidation is effectively the loss of electrons uh, and reduction is the gain of electrons. So remember, um, oxidation and reduction is all to do with electrons. So that's what you've got to uh, have in your head uh, all the time when you think of reduction and oxidation. So um, that's one bit there. Now the agents are basically chemicals which do the opposite to the process. And there is a big difference between the two. So an agent is effectively a chemical which will allow oxidation or reduction to actually occur. So an oxidizing agent would gain electrons. So any species in a reaction which gains electrons would be classed as an oxidizing agent. Um, and any species which loses electrons would be classed as a reducing agent. And some chemicals are really good at accepting electrons, and we call them uh, very strong oxidizing agents. And some of them are really good at losing electrons or giving up electrons. And we call them strong reducing agents. I'm actually going to use these principles here in an example. I'm going to show you how you can write half an ionic equation. So we're going to look at this redox reaction first. Now, redox reaction is a, a chemical reaction that has reduction and oxidation happening at the same time. Uh, and when we actually faced with a redox equation, uh, we have to come up with an ionic equation for this. And then the first thing we have to do is take our compounds and split them up into ions. Now, the reason why we do this is because this reaction is is all in solution, it's all aqueous, dissolved in solution, um, and compounds such as sodium bromide, sodium chloride, like salts, will dissolve in water, and when they do that, they actually split up into ions anyway, so we're just getting a true perspective on this. So you can see here, we've got sodium bromide plus chlorine, and uh, we'll form sodium chloride and bromine. Now this is a displacement reaction. Our compound is here and here. These are our two compounds. So sodium bromide will split up into the two constituent ions, so here we have two lots of Na plus because we have two lots of NaBr. So we'll have two Na plus ions and we'll also have two Br minus ions. Uh, we'll do the same over here as well. You can see here we have two lots of sodium ions and two lots of chloride ions. Now, the first thing what I want to um, identify is basically any changes in this reaction. You can see here that the Br minus has changed because it's now um, produced Br2. So there's a change there, which I'll come on to in a minute. Um, our Cl2 which was a reactant here, has now gone and formed Cl minus. So there's a change there. Something has happened in this reaction. Um, but you can see the only one which hasn't changed is sodium. Now sodium has gone from 2Na plus and it's still 2Na plus as a product as well. So because no change has actually occurred here, um, we'll class sodium as a spectator ion. So I'll just circle them ones there. Uh, and these ones are spectator ions. So I'll put that on there. And so spectator ions are ions which are in the solution, but they don't actually get involved in the reaction directly. So these are spectator ions there. So um, looking at the ones which change, because they're the most important ones. You see here we've got two Br minus, uh, and that's going to Br2. We're going to write half equation, and we're going to try and um, identify if that is an oxidizing process or reducing process. So we're going to write down two Br minus, because that's what we start off with. So there's our reaction there. Uh, and that's going to form Br2. So we're going to put that there. Now you can see here that we have a two negative charge on here. So we've got Br minus, but we have two of them. So that's two minus. Uh, and we have Br2 over here, which is neutral. It doesn't have a charge. Um, now remember, oxidation and reduction is all to do with electrons. So we're going to add electrons here to balance out the charges on the left and the right. You see, uh, um, obviously, it's negative here and neutral here. So we need to add negative charges on this side. So we need to add our electron there. Um, and because we have a two negative charge there and it's neutral on this side, then we have to have two electrons 
on the right hand side, which is on there. Okay, so try to identify if this process here is oxidation or reduction is really simple. So you can see here that Br minus is obviously um, we have a, um, a loss of electrons. So this whole process here is actually oxidation. So we're losing electrons um, onto obviously as we go from Br minus to Br2. So we call this oxidation. So I'm going to put that on there. So this one's oxidation, so I'll put that one on red. Okay, so if we look at the other side, I'll just highlight this. So there's Br minus, go to Br2. So this is oxidation, this process here. That's oxidation. Okay, uh, the next one is Cl2, which is this one here. Cl2, and that's going to go and form two lots of Cl minus. Now you can see that we have a two negative charge on the right, neutral on the left. So in terms of electrons, it has to go here. Two electrons, two E minus on the left hand side. So this process, as you can see, is obviously gaining electrons. We have Cl2 accepting electrons to form Cl minus. So this is a reduction reaction. So I'm gonna put this one over here. So this is reduction. So put red over there. And so we'll highlight this. There's the Cl. There's the Cl minus. So this one is obviously going to be reduction going from there to there is reduction. So our chlorine is undergoing a reduction reaction and our bromide ion is undergoing an oxidation reaction. So in terms of the agents, uh, remember an oxidizing agent is something that gains electrons. Now if you look at these reactions here, um, the only one which is gaining electrons is the chlorine. So that's gaining electrons going from left to right. So this one is our um, oxidizing agent. So I'll just circle that. This is our oxidizing agent. Because you can see the chlorine is obviously gaining electrons. And our Br- is losing electrons. So this is our reducing agent. There you go. Okay, so we've identified our oxidizing and reducing agents in this reaction as well. And it would be the opposite way if you were going uh, back to front, but this reaction is going from left to right. So these are our oxidizing and reducing agents. Okay, so once we've done that, we've got our two half equations. We've identified what's, where, which one's oxidation, which one's reduction. We've also managed to identify our reducing and oxidizing agents. So the last thing we can do is come up with an ionic equation. Now, ionic equations are really easy. And all you have to do is make sure that your electrons in your two half equations uh, are equal because an ionic equation is basically the combination of the two half equations. So we have two electrons. And you can see the electrons in this step and the electrons in this step are equal. So what that means is that actually we can cancel these out. So if we put a line through there and a line through there, they'll cancel out. Ionic equations have no electrons in them, so we've got to get rid of them. And all we do is we rewrite out whatever's on the left hand side of both equations first. So you can see we have two Br minus. So I'll put that there. Uh, and that's going to react with Cl2. That's going to go there. And the electrons are obviously being cancelled out. So on the right hand side, we have Br2. And we have two Cl minus, which is on there. And there is our half equation. Uh, oh, ionic equation, sorry. Now you can see, um, just finally, you can see that obviously the bit that's missing or the main difference between the ionic equation and the standard chemical equation is you can see there's no spectator ion in here. It doesn't play any role. Um, the ionic equation purely shows you what is actually reacting with what and um, showing you the relative species. Um, but that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.